G'day Internet and welcome back to another video. This is just a quick one because I got something cool in the mail this week uh, and a lot of my time is being taken up with Septandy and getting ready for it. So let's take a look. So let me get started with this. This here is my Pi 1541. I think it's a great device. Uh, it's a big improvement over the SD to IEC uh, and dollar wise uh, it offers incredible bang for buck. So I have that. Additionally, being a Commodore 64 owner, I also have an Epix Fastload cartridge, um, which is a useful bit of kit that most Commodore 64 owners probably have, or are at least hunting. Now, it's not just a case of having these, because when you think about it, you've got these, but then you also need for the Pi 1541 an IEC cable, and you also need a power supply. So, what if we were able to combine all of these into one thing? And here it is. This is a combined Epix fast load cartridge and a Pi 1541. And because it plugs into the cartridge port, the Pi is able to draw its 5 volts directly from the Commodore 64. So, no power cable. And this just plugs into the IEC port on your Commodore 64. So let's whip the cover off this and we'll see what's going on inside. Now, anyone familiar with a uh, Pi 1541, or in this case, the Zero version, uh, the Pi simply plugs in to the bottom of this PCB and you've got your buttons, your screen, uh, your cable to IEC, and this bit here is simply a modern reproduction of an Epix fast load. Uh, and as far as I am aware, the 5 volt from here simply gets fed through to the, uh, the Pi and the rest of the Pi 1541 circuit board, so no power. And if I bring in my Commodore 64, it really is just a case of plugging this in as a normal cartridge, and then plugging this in to the IEC port and you're ready to go. And if I switch on my Commodore 64 and give it a sec, up it comes and it, you operate it just like any other Pi 1541. So you can select a game, select a disk image, it loads it and you're ready to rock and roll. So with the disk image loaded and the fast loader built into it, it's made really, really simple. You just go command run stop and it will start loading the game that you've got. And there we go, nice and simple. And one of the other benefits it's got is it also has a built in reset button. So there we go, back to the start screen. So that's a very quick look at the Pi 1541 with the built-in fast loader. Not really sure what to call it. Epix Pi 1541, fast loading Pi 1541, Pi 1541 fast loader. Anyway, I'm not sure if it actually has a name, but one of those would probably do. Now, I got mine from Jason at Melbourne uh, Console Reproductions. Uh, he's just started making them. Um, I got involved because he needed a case for it. Now, I didn't design the case, if you maybe saw on the label of the actual device. Um, I just modified it a bit to suit his particular PCB that he's making. So that's how I got involved. Uh, and for that, I got a free one. So I was pretty happy about that. Um, but by no means did Jason send it to me for review. This is just something I wanted to do. But I think it's a pretty cool device. Um, a couple of quick things. Uh, obviously, as I mentioned in the intro, uh, Septandy is coming up, so uh, I hope you're looking forward to that. Um, and one other thing is I've decided to spark up a Patreon page, and there's a couple of reasons for that. Doing this with all the equipment and everything is not cheap. And the other thing is, is that being involved in the vintage computer hobby, it's not cheap either. Um, to put uh, an idea around it, uh, this weekend, or weekend just been, I finally picked up a Tandy TRS-80 Model 4, which is a fantastic machine, and I've always wanted it. It cost me 500 Australian dollars. It's getting to the point where many of us are simply being priced out of the hobby. 
Um, and given that my YouTube channel is primarily based around that, it becomes quite expensive. So links are in the description if you are wanting to help out the channel and support the channel. Um, I've kept it to just one tier, which is uh, I think five uh, American dollars uh, per month. And that's it, regardless of how many videos I do happen to put out because I know that my schedule is, well, kind of rubbish. Um, so it's there if you fancy uh, supporting the channel, links in description, all that kind of stuff. But if you like the video, I'd uh, appreciate a like and possibly subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.